In this video, we are going to continue our discussion of quantified statements. In mathematics, it is very important to be able to negate quantified statements such as definitions and theorems. However, before we can negate quantified statements, it is necessary to define first the equivalence for two open sentences. Suppose that P of X and Q of X are open sentences with domain D. We say that P of X and Q of X are equivalent in D if and only if they have the same truth set. If they are equivalent for every possible domain D, we say that they are equivalent. Notice the difference here. You have equivalent in D. Here they are equivalent if they are equivalent in every possible domain. So, for example, let us consider the two open sentence x squared equals x and x equals 1. If we are in the set of natural numbers, these are equivalent. Why is that? What is the truth set of this open sentence? x squared equals x, if we're going to solve it, that means that you have x equals 0 or 1, right? However, we are just inside n and 0 is not an element of the set of natural numbers. So here, our truth set is just 1. And here, of course, the truth set is also the set containing 1. So therefore, they are equivalent. However, if we change our domain to the set of real numbers, the truth set of this first open sentence is 0, 1, whereas for this one, the truth set is one. So therefore, they are not equivalent in the set of real numbers. Since it is not true that they are equivalent in all possible domains, so therefore, x squared equals x and x equals 1 are not equivalent. Next, let us consider the open sentences x squared equals 4 and the open sentence x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. We are just in the set of natural numbers. The truth set of this open sentence is just 2. And here, when is this true? Take note that in the set of natural numbers, this is always false. So therefore, we will only be true here when x is equal to 2. So the truth set of this is still the set containing 2. If we change our domain to the set of all real numbers, the truth set of this is 2, negative 2. And that is also the truth set of this open sentence. Actually, whatever is the domain that we define, these two statements will always be equivalent. So therefore, x squared equals 4 and the statement x equals 2 or x equals negative 2 are equivalent. If we have equivalent open sentences, that just means that we can substitute one for the other whenever we are using them in quantified statements. We will see that later. We will now define the meaning of equivalent quantified statements. We say that two quantified statements are equivalent in a given domain if they have the same truth value in that domain and they are said to be equivalent if and only if they are equivalent in every possible domain. So for example, let us consider the quantified statement. There exists a real number, x, such that 3x equals 6. In the quantified statement, there exists a real number, x, such that x is equal to 2. If we are in the set of all real numbers, we just have to consider the truth value. What is the truth value of this one? This is true and this is also True. So therefore, we say that they are equivalent in R. However, even if you change this domain here, this two will always be equivalent. So therefore, these two quantified statements are equivalent, not just in R, but for every possible domain. So therefore, I have the word equivalent. If we are in the set of natural numbers, the quantified statement for all x in the set of natural numbers 
x is greater than 3 is equivalent to the quantified statement for all x in the set of natural numbers x is greater than or equal to 4. Let us find the truth value of these two quantified statements. What is the truth value of the first statement? This one here is false. Because not all natural numbers are greater than 3. And of course, this is also false. They have the same truth value, so therefore they are equivalent in the set of the natural numbers. However, if we change our domain to the set of all real numbers such that x is greater than or equal to 3.5, the statement for all x in D, x is greater than 3, this is true because remember that your x in D are greater than or equal to 3.5. However, this quantified statement here is false because you have numbers here in D which are not greater than or equal to 4. Since we were able to get one particular domain for which these two sentences are not equivalent. So therefore, our conclusion is that these two statements are not equivalent. Here are some of the equivalent quantified statements. So as you can notice here, we have seen these equivalent statements in our previous video lectures except that Instead of just propositions P and Q, we now have open sentences P of X and Q of X with the universal quantifier. So here, the conjunction is commutative and so is disjunction. And then this is just the contrapositive of an implication. And this is just De Morgan's law. Additional equivalent pairs of quantified statements may be obtained by replacing each occurrence of the universal quantifier in these statements by the existential quantifier. Let us now find the negation of the universal quantifier. Let us consider the statement, all men are liars. Of course, this is a false statement. How will you convince another person that this statement is false? If this is the set of all men, it is not true that everybody here are liars it means that not all men are liars but what is another way of stating this this is the same as saying that there is someone here at least one in the set of all men such that x is not a liar so this is the negation of this statement some men are not liars let us recall that to show that a quantified statement involving the universal quantifier is false, we need to show a counter example. So that is, if this statement is true for all the possible values of x here in D, P of X is true. So the opposite of this must happen if this is false. So here is true. So here for all X element of D, the statement P of X is false. What does that mean? There is an element in D such that P of X is false. How will you write that symbolically? You have found an X, so there exists an X in D such that P of X is false. That means that not P of X is true. So always remember that whenever you have quantified statements, you have an implied is true here. For all X in D, P of X means that for all X in D, P of X is true. So that's why here there exists an X in D such that not P of X is true, which is the same as saying that P of X is false. Here is the result that we have obtained. What this is saying is that in order to negate the universal quantifier, all you have to do is to change the universal quantifier to the existential quantifier. And then 
negate the open sentence. Take note that the common mistake of many students is that they get carried away in negating the quantifier. So in particular, when negating the statement for all x in s, p of x, you might incorrectly write there exists x not in s. So you also negated this. So this is wrong. Remember, you are only negating the open sentence and you are replacing the for all by there exists. You do not change this one. The x that we find should still be inside s, as can be seen in this example. It's just that here our s is d. Let us now find the negation of the existential quantifier. Suppose that one of your friends tell you that there is a student in our math class who was born on October 31. And you know that this statement is false. How will you convince him that this statement is false? Well, you have to show him that all of your classmates has a birthday on some day other than October 31. So therefore, in general, if we have the statement there exists x in d, p of x, if this is true, this is saying that you can find an x here in d wherein p of x is true. What will happen if this statement is false? This means that you cannot find such an x for which p of x is true, meaning to say whatever x you get inside your d, your p of x there is always false for all possible x in d. No matter what you get, you always get that p of x is false. So therefore, what is that statement? For all x in d, p of x is false means that not p of x is true. Therefore, we have this negation. The negation of there exists x in d, p of x is for all x in d, not p of x. This is saying that to negate the existential quantifier, it's almost the same as the negation of the universal quantifier. You interchange there exists with for all and you negate the open sentence. So for example, let us find the negation of the following. Some members of our class earned a perfect score on the exam. So some member denotes there exist, correct? So therefore, some will become all. All members of our class. And then the negation of this part. Earned a perfect score, so did not earn perfect score in the exam. Next, we have for all x in the set containing 1, 2, 3, 5, x is prime. For all x becomes there exists x, but you still have element of 1, 2, 3, 5, and then negate x is prime. So that's x is not prime. So when we read this in English, we say that there is a number in this set which is not prime. Next, there exists x in z such that if x is greater than 1, then x does not have a prime divisor. Take note that the open sentence here is an implication. x is greater than 1, then x does not have a prime divisor. So, to negate this, we change there exists to for all x. And then we still have in z. How do you negate? P implies Q. Let us recall the negation of P implies Q is P and not Q. So I will copy the premise and negate the conclusion. X has a prime divisor. How do we translate this in English? Any integer 
is greater than 1 and it has a prime divisor. We conclude this section by introducing a third quantifier related to the existential quantifier. Let us recall that the existential statement there exists x in D, P of x, means that there is at least one domain element that is in the truth set of P of x. Again, this means that there is an x in D for which P of x is true. Or in other words, the truth set of P is not empty. Oftentimes, you want to say that there is one and only one such element. That is, the element is unique. For example, for the set of real numbers, there exists exactly one additive identity, and that is the number zero. Or for the set of natural numbers, there exists exactly one multiplicative identity, the number one. The next quantifier that we are going to define will accomplish this goal for us. A unique existential statement is a statement of this form, wherein this is read as there exists a unique, p of x is a predicate with domain d. This one is true if and only if p of x is true for exactly one x in the set d. This is saying that the truth set of p will only contain one element, that is the cardinality. This is the cardinality of TP, the truth set. It should be equal to 1. Take note that this conditional statement is true. If this is true, if there exists a unique element such that P of X, definitely there is an element of D such that P of X. Of course, when this is false, we no longer care about this one because the entire implication is true. So that is why whenever we have conditionals, we're only interested when the premise is true. This is saying again that if this is true, then automatically this is also true. However, the converse of this conditional is not true. It is possible that this is true, but this is false. That is, when... You have two such elements, let's call this A and B, for which the proposition P of X is true. So P of A and P of B are true. So therefore, that element in D is not unique because we were able to find at least two. The statement there is only one even prime integer can be formally written as there exists a unique integer, so x in z, such that x is prime. Let us find the truth value of the following statements which contain the unique existential quantifier. For the first one, there exists a unique x in the set of natural numbers such that the absolute value of x plus 4 is equal to 1. When we solve for this equation, we get that x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to negative 5. However, we are inside the set of natural numbers. So in this case, if this is our p of x, the truth set of p is empty. So therefore, this statement is false. For the second example, we are still in the set of natural numbers. When we solve for x here, we get that x is equal to 9 or x is equal to negative 1. Again, since we are in the set of natural numbers, we will only get x equals 9. So therefore, this will only be true when x is equal to 9. So we only have one element in the truth set. So therefore, this statement is true. And lastly, for this one, Solving for x will give us x equals 7 or x is equal to 1. Hence, the truth set of our open sentence here is the set containing 1 and 7. You have two elements. Two elements can satisfy this property, so therefore this is false.
This example shows us how to establish that a statement involving the unique existential quantifier is false. It's either we show that the truth set of the open sentence is either empty or it contains more than one element. Let me just write it here. The truth set is the empty set or the truth set has more than one element. So meaning at least two. If the truth set is the null set, that means that if this is our D, there is nothing in here for which P of X is true. So that means P of X is always false in here. So therefore, this scenario means that for all X in D, P of X is false. That means not P of X is true. This scenario, on the other hand, tells us that it's possible to get at least two elements, let's call them x and y, for which p of x is true and p of y is also true. Hence, this means that there exist x and y in the set D for which x is not equal to y because we want them to be different and p of x and p of y are true we now have the following result the negation of the unique existential quantifier there exists a unique x in d such that p of x is equivalent to for all x in d not p of x or you have an or there this is one statement, this or this. So for example, we want to negate the following unique existential statement. For number one, this is equivalent to first for all x in D. x is greater than or equal to 2. That is this part here. This part here is just the negation of there exists x in D, P of x, correct? We just did not mind the uniqueness there. And then we have the other component for this one. We have or. This is saying that we have found two elements in D which satisfies your open sentence here. So we have there exists x and y in D such that x is less than 2 and y is also less than 2. Next, there exists x and D such that p of x and q of x. This is our predicate here. So for the first one, just negate this without the uniqueness part. So that becomes for all x in D. We get the negation of P of x and Q of x. I will simplify that later. Then for the other part, or, we have there exists two elements in D. So that's why we have the part x is not equal to y. Then we have, and this should be true. P of x and Q of x. And P of y and Q of y. I already removed the parenthesis here because all of these are conjunctions.